Tonight, the Mangote Mangrove in Focus and efforts to plant 4,000 new trees will find out why this area is so important. This is a special edition of Calabash Community. The Mangote Mangrove, directly opposite the George Odlum Stadium, has been under threat from a mysterious disease. Ten acres of the mangrove has been drying and dying, and there is a huge effort underway to restore the mangroves. 4,000 plants are earmarked to be planted. It is a project involving a number of agencies, including the Sinusha National Trust, the Nature Conservancy, the Opicon Charcoal and Agricultural Producers Association, CMOS Farmers and EcoSouth Tours. There are a few agencies involved such as the Forestry and Fisheries Departments. Tonight we visit the Mangrove as a youth group, the Youth Emergency Action Committee and other schools are getting up close and personal with the Mangrove and also involved in planting as well. We begin with our tour tonight with the members of YEAC and the President, Alistair Phillip. My name is Alistair Phillip and I represent Caritas Antilles YAC, which is Youth Emergency Action Committees. Basically, we're doing an activity where we visited um, the mangrove and one of our projects focus, our goals for this phase, which is phase five, is to visit areas um, where we would learn about climate change and how it's being impacted by um, El Nino and La Nina phenomenon. So basically, the volunteers all the members are volunteers of YAC are here to learn about um, mangroves and to do the mangrove restoration project in collaboration with other stakeholders. So what did you actually get to physically do today? Physical, physically we, let me tell you, this was a wonderful experience, one, of a, one that I will remember for a lifetime and basically we had the opportunity to, first of all, learn about the mangroves, which was a very important component because, I mean, you need to be knowledgeable about the environment and be able to um, get the training so that you could go out in the field. So we did this, which is wonderful, part one. Part two was for us to actually go out in the field and plant the seedlings that are, um, were found in the nursery. So the members were out there assisting and doing as much as they could have physically um, participate in for the day. So for you, what is the most important thing that you learned here today? The most important thing that we learned here today is basically the awareness of our environment, how important it is, how um, each person can make a difference. So as being here um, would signify that we we feel that the environment is important to us and every little person, every little group can make a change, big or small. Is there a better appreciation now of what the, the value of mangroves, why we need them? Yes, definitely, most definitely. And I think that everybody um, should take the opportunity to participate in this um, activity, um, get an appreciation for those persons who did do it for a living or, or basically who has experts in that particular um, um, scope of work. And I mean, the environment belongs to everybody, I mean, and we need to leave something behind for um, those persons be, um, behind us, like our um, children and their children. So if we actively participate in restoration work like this, they will have some kind of continuity. Yes? Finally, um, what kind of commitments are you willing, I, I would like to see, see you getting back and getting more into this, planting some more of those, uh, those seedlings as well? Well, once we're invited to participate, that could be something that we definitely will look into, um, as well as any other environmentally friendly um, activities. Um, having the young persons actively involved is something that we must encourage and we must celebrate as well because, um, you know, a lot of the time we have persons stereotyping communities and young persons and when those young volunteers go out to the work, we must praise them and appreciate their dedication. Let's say finally, but just for a matter of information, how many members do you have here today? Today we have about 22 individuals participating in this exercise and we must highlight our sponsors and we must um, see how appreciative we are for their continued support. So we therefore we thank USAID, we thank Caritas Antilles and we thank CRS here with us today, our representatives and thank you very much for your support. Also part of the tour was a rep of the Catholic Relief Services in the Caribbean. Okay, my name is Miriam Orellana and I work for CRS, Catholic Relief Services, 
in Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. Give us an idea of um, how did you get involved into this activity? Well, CRS, Catholic Relief Services, funds projects uh, all around the world. We are the Caritas from the United States. So we are funding this project to Caritas Antillas and uh, we're funding, we, we've been funding this project for five years already. So we are, we are right now here visiting the project sites. Mm -hmm. So talk, talk to us about the experience, what was it like for you today? Uh, it was wonderful, <laughs> it, was, it was an excellent experience. Especially to see youth, young people uh, going into the mangroves and getting the experience of knowing what is a mangrove, the importance of, of a mangrove and the importance of uh, taking care of the environment. I think that's a, that's a main issue. As the project is being focused on those issues, like climate change, the La Niña effects, and, uh, and uh, working with young people, realizing what emergencies mean. Mm -hmm. I was about to ask you, how does this all fit into the over, overall um, objective of Caritas? Um, I think it's uh, to make especially youth people, young people, be conscious of uh, that we have to take care of our environment and that uh, being islands here all in, in the Caribbean, the climate emergencies or climate issues, uh, we're very close to those ones. So young people can be the first respondents to if an emergency comes. So uh, that's one of the purposes of uh, Caritas to here. And for you personally, um, what is it like? Uh, how, what, was it a challenge for you? Did you get to plant any of the seedlings at all? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> I planted too. <laughs> and it, I, it really was a challenge. I, I didn't. I wasn't expecting to have this experience, and it was, and it was excellent to put hands on it. It's, mm. uh, it's always a challenge, and it's, uh, it was a great experience. Along the way, we met a family also participating in the mangrove planting exercise. Amon McLawrence, his sisters and mother were all involved. My name is Amon and I just finished planted a red mangrove in the Makute mangrove, which is the biggest mangrove in St. Lucia. Okay, so talk to me about it. Was it fun? Did you enjoy the, what you just did there? Yes, I did enjoy what I just did, getting my hands dirty and digging in the mud. Now, do you understand why you were doing this? Yes, I'm to help save the mangrove. Now, that is out. Now, when you get back to school tomorrow and next week, what are you going to tell your friends? How are you going to convince them that they should come and start planting mangroves as well? Um, Why do you think they should come and join you? Um, to help, to help save the mangroves and not um, make the sea water, the sea come to destroy our home, our our sea, our cities and our houses and other. And then I was schooled in St. Lucia. Deepa Gidari, and I'm from Bosseju Grosile. I've always been a, a lover of the environment, and over the years, what I've done is I've always ensured that any activity that takes us out there where we get to learn about St. Lucia, I always bring my kids along with me because too many times we get caught up with work and we stay in the working world. We stay in our offices, work home, work home. That's how it always is. And as children and even for the generations coming up, the people today, the working people today, they, they forget where they used to be at one point in time, growing up, playing in the trees, etc. And this is something the kids nowadays are missing out on. So I've brought my family here today for them to appreciate the whole idea of the mangrove, understand the importance of the mangrove, the role it plays in our lives. So explain to me, how did you explain to them why they should be part of this? What I basically told them is that the mangrove is, I related it to their schoolwork because they've had to do assignments regarding ecosystems. And we've always chose the mangroves because it's easy to get information. So by bringing them now live into a mangrove, they, it helps them to connect with what they're learning in the school. This is Kalabash Kemenizi, our tour of the Makute Mangrove. We'll continue shortly.